Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? My hair's a bit mad today. I think I brushed it, yeah, I think I did, yeah. That did look alright. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's a wet day. Although there's no, uh, there's very little cloud. And uh, it's not really cold. We are in the run-up to Christmas. It's the 14th. I got a bit of a cough. <coughs> I've had my flu jab. I'm waiting for my COVID jab. They've only been rolled out a week. Uh, what else? I'm waiting to. Uh, I need to go over to Thurrock and get my plane rather my daughter's plane but uh, the problem is that Thurrock's in uh, tier 2 and we're in tier 3 so but there is an exemption for um, maintenance flights to do with aircraft providing you're not uh, flying the aircraft from a tier 3 to a tier 2 uh, and in fact I won't, I'll be flying it from tier 2 to tier 3. The airfield that I usually fly from, Maypole, is closing down on January the 11th. They've sold it. Well, I'm tempted to say they've sold it to developers because they don't want to keep it as an airfield. But I think that's probably what's happened. So uh, anyway, he's going to be £2 million better off, the, the owner. And uh, I've had to move to uh, another field near Canterbury, which fortunately I have got a relationship with uh, the owner, Bob, who uh, was, um, that was the airfield I used to fly from originally when I first got my license about uh, 30 years ago. So, <coughs> Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on uh, payment patience and things. Because um, I think, uh, you know, we pioneer doing uh, ways of doing things differently. And this has turned out to be quite a good, you know, good change. I mean, uh, it's worked quite well for us. It hasn't caused a drastic drop-off in patience, at least not of the type that we want to keep. Um, and that's this idea of paying in advance for treatment. And we only, uh, we can only do it because we've got this payment system called Square, uh, which is a rather futuristic payment terminal, which looks like a bit like a small iPhone. And, uh, but, but the best part of it is the back end. And the best part about the back end is that you can send people invoices of which they can then pay on their mobile phone. Now, if you've got a, a vertical software package, we, we use Systems for Dentists, or you might have one of the other ones, um, then you will, of course, be able to pay invoices, uh, send out invoices, but... Uh, whether the patient can pay them online, I don't know. It's possible that they are, they can, but in our case, Systems for Dentists doesn't support that. So we could invoice people, but nobody ever paid. You know, you could send out invoices till you were blue in the face, and never, never got any money. So what we did was we had a particular period where I'd had a few people make appointments and not turn up. Usually, new new patients, you know turn this down a bit because we're defrosted now and um, uh, my wife who's the hygienist had six patients booked in and, and four of them didn't turn up so I said look this is ridiculous uh, we're going to charge people in advance for their it was first of all it started off for the hygiene and for new patients who wanted checkups and then very very quickly sort of uh, oh Petrol. So very quickly then um, <clears throat> uh, 
what's the word, not accelerated, expanded to include all, all payments. And the way we do it is when we make an appointment for a patient, we uh, work out how much their treatment's going to be, and then we issue them with an invoice, which is payable 48 hours before they attend. And then, um, if we, we then check the day before if anybody hasn't paid, and if they haven't paid, then we just cancel their appointment. And in fact, we're happy to do that. We, we're always happy, providing someone gave us at least one working day's notice, to cancel their appointment without charge. But what they used to do was they, they used to either cancel on the day or not cancel at all. Uh, when they, they wouldn't have been charged if they'd only rung us the day before. So what we do is we take their non-payment of the invoice as, as pretty much notice that they're not going to come in, you see? And so it's a great system. It works well for, it's a win-win because we get to rebook the time or they then, or they ring up in a fluster and say, oh, I need to pay my invoice. Or, um, or we, they get cancelled and, uh, and they probably weren't going to come in anyway and they don't they then get charged. You know, I have an invoice outstanding on their account which they then don't pay and, and don't just don't come back you know it's with bad feeling on all sides so so anyway um, this uh, square system is uh, uh, charges for the service charges two and a half percent of the invoice value and uh, in fact, if the patient's there in the surgery, I think they charge, and they use the card machine, it's one and a half percent. Now, this is probably four times what anyone else charges. So, you know, if you're if you're sitting there saying, oh, I could get 0 0.3, 0 0.35, whatever, on, on my cards, and, you, and you're paying 1.5, you know, you must be, you must have sawdust for brains. Then I will just say that you're. I've had a I've had a terminal like I had a terminal like that for five years from Cardnet, and if you're still using Cardnet and renting your terminal off Merchant Services Limited, then you've got sawdust for brains, okay? Because you need the uh, flexibility and the programmability of this back end that you get with Square, and I dare say, and and I'm sure because when we put our services out to tender for card services and, and when we ended up with Square um, people did contact us and say basically they contacted us and said look you know what are you paying at the moment we can undercut that and when I read, I told them that, that I wasn't really interested in saving 50p a month um, a, a couple of them did say no well we have actually got or we can offer an all singing all dancing software based back end that does uh, invoice payment online and stuff like that but you can bet your life <laughs> it's not it's not going to be 1.5 percent it's not actually if you use the back end it's 2.5 percent okay so if you haven't had a connery yet you can have one now because we're paying 2.5 percent on the vast bulk of our um our credit card uh, payments and let's face it the credit card payments are the vast bulk of our payments so you could say that uh, for us, 2.5% is the new 0.35%. So we're paying, like, for example, seven times. Hello. I'm gonna do a quick overtake of a fork left. So why, why am I paying this mad high price? Well, the answer is that um, we, it's reduced our PFAs, our DNSs, whatever you want to call them, patients who didn't turn up, it's reduced them uh, to zero. And by zero, I mean we are not getting any patients failing to turn up or not turning up who haven't paid, right? So just let that sink in for a minute. We are getting no patients, we're fully booked, and we're get, and we're fully, um, and we're getting 100% of the money. So no no shows. And if they're no shows, then 
then they've shouldered the risk of paying for the no-show. Um, so, I mean, you, you wouldn't believe the change in the atmosphere within the practice. You know, we're constantly... <laughs> beforehand we're sort of sitting there all sitting around depressed oh this patient hasn't turned up oh that's another 78 pounds that we're not going to get another 45 minutes the hygienist is going to be sitting around and then and then the next patient is the next patient not going to turn it up and then so then she'll have been sitting around for two hours uh, you know and then she could have gone down Tesco's or Sainsbury's or something done her shopping what a waste of time how inconsiderate, why do these patients do this? Uh, you, know, you know, when you ring them, they never answer their phone. They know it's you ringing. Uh, so it's not like you can get an answer, you know. And even if you do get an answer, they can never come in. It's like, when, when, what are you gonna do? I mean, if you're booked up all day, um, then, and the 11 o'clock doesn't turn up, you know, we, we used to be able to say, well, like, if you come in at three, then, uh, you know, we'll forget it. But um, we can't do that now because we are booked because the surgery time is at a premium due to COVID, you know, and not being able to see so many patients. So we're booked up less densely and surgery time is at a premium. And so, but then, then you get a situation when you say no I'm sorry you know I'm gonna to have to charge you because uh, I can't get you fitted back in today and then the three o'clock patient doesn't turn up and everybody's sitting around saying well with that 11 o'clock patient could in got to go in at three o'clock if only the three o'clock patient had had the courtesy to tell us that they weren't coming in now the only reason why they are they they have the courtesy or going to have the courtesy to tell you that they're not coming in is uh, to save their money, to save their own money. <laughs> if it's their £45 on the line, or their £78 on the line, which is what we charge for hygienists, uh, then if they want to rescue that money, get that money back, then they have to cancel and give us a day's notice. And then uh, almost always, um, we don't refund the money, what happens is it just rolls on to whenever they rebook their appointment. But but at least they will book and reschedule. You know, if they're not coming in, they won't just not turn up. Now, the model I use is very much the airline model, where if you book a 60 pound flight to Belfast or something, or to Amsterdam, and uh, you don't turn up, then the uh, the airplane flies without you. You know, the seat, the seat flies to Amsterdam without you. <laughs> and you don't ring up the airline afterwards and say uh, I'm sorry I, I couldn't make it you know and I don't expect to be charged and <clears throat> I'm sure people used to do that and uh, that's why the airlines charge in advance and you don't get your money back if you miss the flight you know and that's what my chairs are they're like a, a service is provided in a particular location at a particular time and you can reserve it and if you reserve it and you choose not to avail yourself of it, then that's your privilege. You know, I've never ever got annoyed with a patient who paid for treatment and then didn't turn up for it. In fact, I've even gone so far as to, if that, if that treatment involves some element of laboratory work, I've even refunded, let's say someone books in for a crown and they, they don't, uh, you know, they don't turn up for what one reason or another and then I will refund them the lab bill because we haven't incurred it and I think that's only fair and no patient has ever asked us to do that and I don't think it would ever occur to any patient to say uh, you know okay I'll pay you for your time but your time is not the whole cost you you know you would have paid the technician and you don't have to do that now um, <coughs> This is the first half decent cough I've had since COVID. So who knows? This is the trouble. For, for future historians, this is the period of time where if you get a cough and you haven't inhaled a crumb or something, then you <clears throat> you think to yourself, this is it. I'm dead. 
<laughs> Especially if you're overweight and over 60, which is what I am. But uh, <clears throat> who knows? We'll have to see if it gets significantly worse. <clears throat> Right, so, so there's a, there's a, there's a thing. You have to, um, you have to have some sort of, uh, the secret is you have to have some sort of invoicing system that allows people to pay on their cards. Now, <clears throat> on the positive side of things, um, you, you get a very, uh, positive cash flow from this because let's say someone like as they are today someone's coming in to have a bridge done um, it's a Monday so they would have had to have settled by Thursday otherwise uh, we, we would have cancelled their appointments you want to go <clears throat> sorry this, we've got a staggered junction here do you want to Oh no, okay, alright. We're gonna. It gets, tends to get treated as a roundabout by the people who use it often, especially when there's big lorries coming out. So, so you get a monster cash flow, monster positive cash flow, which is great. And uh, so, and also, a lot of people, you know, especially people for whom money is not. You know, you, you get you get a lot of people who say, you, you know, the sort who say they come along. Do you do <clears throat> do you do a um, payment by instalments? Yes, we do. Not internally, but we do. Uh, we offer it through Itachi Finance. Zero percent. It costs us about eight percent. We lose eight percent of the fee to Hitachi for them to borrow at zero percent. But I know I, I work on the basis that a lot of people want it, expect it, and, and wouldn't have the work done otherwise. So, you know, it's a bit like someone saying to you, <clears throat> I want to have like a thousand pounds worth of work done. Could you, <clears throat> but, you know, I can, can you give me 8% discount? I can you do it for 920 quid? <clears throat> and I'll go ahead with it straight away. There's a very few of us would say no. You know, uh, so it, it does uh, sell work and allow us to do work that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Um, but then what happens is you get the patients who come in and ask you if you've got a scheme, and then the next thing you get an email from Hidachi saying they've been turned down. And then you get an email from them saying that they can't have the work done in January. Can you put it back to the end of February? which basically means it's going to be first <clears throat> priority out of their pay packet next time they get paid. So there are people like that, but then there are other people who've got money who can uh, fund this sort of stuff. And so if you're doing a bridge, let's say typically our bridge is going to cost 1,400 quid or something, 1,500 quid. Um, and what they do is they get an invoice and it arrives on the day that they came in and book, booked it um, and then they'll just pay it. They'll take the attitude like, there's one less thing to worry about, you know. I'll just uh, pay that, then I'll know it's paid. And so you'll get your 1,400 quid in, in advance. So far from having uh, 1,400 quid in on the day the bridge is fitted, or 700 in on the day it's prepped and 700 on the day it's fitted, <coughs> or what we used to do, which was 1400 on the day it was prepped, which is, again, it's, you know, I mean, if your patients aren't used to that, and that's a push, you know, charging what they see it appear to be charging up front at the, at the payment, at the, um, prep stage but I think and, and this is what I always used to explain to the patients that uh, you know I've done I've done my bit of the work you know my bit of the work is done 
and I'm also, they're asking me to incur a laboratory bill, which is basically the other bit of the expense. So <clears throat> really your liability is fully crystallized at the prep stage. The fit stage is really just transition. It's just passing her ownership, it's sticking the thing on and, and, and waving goodbye and saying, cheerio, you know, and uh, ring me if you have any problems. That's not really part of the treatment. <laughs> That's just handing it over. The actual uh, work and expense is all incurred at the prep. So we, uh, after a couple of episodes where patients had a crown fitted and then said that they forgot their wallet and, and, and left. And then I'm not entirely sure whether they fully intended not to pay. But I think what happened was they, they, they probably genuinely forgot their wallet and then realized uh, like a day later or a couple of hours later that they had actually got away without paying. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like just by accident almost. And, um, and, then, and then decided just to leave it and see how far we would push it to chase the money up and realized that there was, there was pretty much nothing we could do to chase the money up. Because uh, in those days you used to have to take them to the small claims court, and um, you know your time was worth more than the cost of chasing them. So it wasn't cost effective to chase them, except as a deterrent. <clears throat> so anyway, so you get the massive, like I would say, for the average dentist, you probably get a twenty thousand pound cash flow boost. Uh, which is nice, providing you do remember that it's not your money. <laughs> the, you know, it's money that's secured against all the work you're going to do. And then the other, you know, might need to be refunded, uh, especially, uh, you know, if you, if you close down. Um, and the other, the other thing is that, um, you know, today <clears throat> I've got a quite a big bridge and quite a big um, sedation case coming in. And it's going to bring in four-figure sum, a very low four-figure sum. And um, but I've already had it, you know. And there's a bit like you do feel a bit like you're working for nothing. Uh, there is that sort of uh, there isn't the buzz of thinking, oh, I've we've done we've done a ton of expensive work today. You know, we have taken X pounds, and that X pounds is, is going to go into the bank because it's, it's not. It's already in the bank, you know. Well, but, but that's good, you know, that's just a different way of working. All right, well, I hope that's of some use to you, and uh, keep in touch. I'll talk to you later. Bye.